Hello, this is the Lego Ninjago Movie Collectible Minifigure Series, the entire series. And if it looks like there are more figures here than usual, it's because there are. This is four rows of five, a total of 20 figures. I might as well start with Lloyd as the green ninja here. He has a bunch of new stuff to see here, including a very subtle print that takes advantage of the slight differences between the printed or painted on version of black and the plastic itself. So that's black on black for that very subtle diamond design in there, which is honestly barely visible from more than a foot away in real life. Depends on how the light hits it. But it's just taking advantage of the difference in level and also glossiness between the paint that they apply and just the slight texture on the plastic from which they, they make these figures. So that same sort of design continues around the back as well. The headgear is two pieces. The upper piece is dual molded to get that really nice green in there. It's very crisp, very just very strong. New design for this series for the sword with the golden tassel on there. He also has a printed piece for the green mech dragon uh, head blueprint there. So that's just fully printed two by three tile, a relatively recent addition to the Lego inventory. You can take this upper piece of the headgear off to leave just the, just the guard over the mouth, which is a little bit wide like this around the edges. You know, it doesn't fold over very well, so it doesn't look so natural, but uh, I think it's done pretty well. It's actually very easy to line this up. I thought it was going to be a little bit of a pain, but it, it's not because of how the, the rear knot just kind of slots into place. So it's very easy to get that to its correct position. This figure also comes with the brand new natural hair piece, which I think looks really good. I actually like this one better than the previous one they've used for this character. Tossled up pretty nicely. Yeah, I look forward to being able to get this same piece, hopefully in some different colors in the future. How about this new version of Garmadon with his new headgear as well? That's pretty cool. Same technique that they've used previously for the double stacked torsos. The upper one is a specialized mold that also has the pauldrons kind of molded into it. This is a new piece at the top of the staff that looks pretty cool. Just a little bit of printing around the standard torso on the back of this one. No printing on the back of the head because there's really no need, but there's a better look at the actual detail of his face. I guess, is that an evil grin? It's kind of hard to tell with the, the real bad baddies. I do need to show you the rest of the print on that torso though. Yeah, that's, that's pretty classic right there. No printing on the arms and just the subtle dark blue for the sash. The Sushi Chef here is probably going to be really popular even outside of the context of the Ninjago movie because, you know, he can just be used as a Sushi Chef. Nice printing for his torso and the nice sushi piece there which has some nice lean tuna and he also has a roll that he was slicing so that has a second printed tile piece there. That looks pretty cool. It's not the same one that they had done before. It's got the headgear which has the, the band around it and also has the bald head top and his legs are dual molded with no printing necessary. The cleaver is not a new piece but it's a good inclusion here and there's no printing on the hip. He has thicker eyebrows than you would expect though. Here's Shark Army General number one with her tapioca tea, bubble tea, boba, whatever you want to call it, which is a great printed piece, just a, you know, a new color scheme and print for the Quickie Mart slushy piece, where it was originally introduced. Lots of printing for this one and also nice uh, inclusions of the kind of ribs in the, what is that? Is it like a cape? I guess it's supposed to be like a cape. Kind of looks like fins as well. Translucent, you know, just a little bit frosty in there. And those lines are done really nicely. No printing on the back of this torso, none really necessary. That hair piece can be used in different ways because right now it's kind of, you know, covering part of her face, but you can also bring it around like this to give just a, a very different look. I think that's gonna be just a, a nice 
useful, usable part, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn it around the rest of the way just so that you can see how it's printed on the back. I don't wanna tear all of this apart just right now, but yeah, pretty consistent with the theme all the way across. And this one looks good, has good accessories. Here's Kai Kendo or Kendo Kai, and his headgear looks fantastic to me. The application of the, the red and of the metallic uh, gold is just spot on. Those colors contrast just so strongly. It looks great to me. I love that. It comes with both Kendo sticks, both of them full length, interestingly. Nice design around the back of that helmet as well. His armor is a little bit plain looking, but I think appropriate. You know, maybe could have used a little bit more detail on, on the front and maybe those pauldrons could have been brought down just a little bit. But it doesn't look too bad. Here's his face beneath there. Very aggressive, very serious. He's got his scar and also an additional bandage on there. No alternate face for this one, but he does come with something else to use for his head. There's a better look at his gi beneath, which is also done pretty nicely with some, some small little crease marks done with the dark red color. That's always nice to see. That's, that's really well done. And pretty fine details in there as well. Comes with his hair, his new style of hair. Crazy new hair, Lego Ninjago movie hair. They really went just absolutely insane with the hair pieces this time around for, you know, for this, this take on the Ninjago universe, but that's pretty well sculpted, I think. I think it actually may look better to me from around the back than it does from the front. I like the movement in there, but another piece that's, I think, going to be useful for different things. Good torso print, especially, though, and more subtlety in the legs there with not just the printing of dark, dark red, but also black, you know, just gives it that little extra bit of class. How about this shark army angler? Look at the headpiece there. It's a slightly rubbery piece and the way that they shaped it, you could use that just by itself. So you can take that off and actually use it to represent an actual angler fish. I, I appreciate that, that they didn't make it too minifig specific. So it actually remains a useful part. It's a brand new mold also for the air tank with just a little bit of armoring around it. And that also has a little bit of print on the front of it. Take all this off. That's <laughs> it's just such a cool piece. There's her face beneath. It also has a scar. It looks like it's been recently stitched up. There's no alternate face for this one, but there is some additional printing to be seen on that torso. That's good stuff. And her mace has the base of just a regular fish, followed by a gunmetal gray uh, bar, or it's like a lightsaber blade, but completely opaque. And then the piece at the end is just spiked and also slightly soft, and it just fits onto there. So that can also be taken off and used independently. Jay in civilian garb includes a built up selfie stick with an exclusive printed tile piece to represent the selfie mode on his phone. He's got a brand new scarf piece that goes all the way around. I need to move some stuff out of the way. No print on the back of this torso, unfortunately, so just a, a little bit of lack of detail there, but I think they try to make up for it with a little bit of printing, just subtle printing on the legs. There he is with everything removed so you can see the rest of the design on his jacket and the rest of his face. No alternate face for this one, but I think the hair is done pretty nicely on this one. It's just a single piece. I guess you could kind of do stuff like that to change its look just a little bit as well. But you know, this is nicely, nicely molded all the way around, all tussled up and has good depth without being too crazy. This is N-Pop Girl who has all the bright colors, all the bright colors, including Ample use of the spring or light spring green color, which I actually really like. And she's a fan, obviously, of Unikitty. Has the new color and print for the teddy bear there. Reuses that hairpiece with a new color scheme. The tutu also has bright colors going all the way around it. So you can see that it's a little bit different from one side versus if you come around to this side, there's that green again and a 
pretty excited face. A little bit more to see with the eyebrows that come up even farther. So if you use a different hairpiece with this one that exposed more of the front of the face, then she ends up looking even more, yeah, excited and just uh, happy in general in her fandom. In contrast, here is the Shark Army Great White Shark, who is not white at all, is he? No, it's, it's an ironic Great White Shark, I believe. Looks like he's been pretty well burnt up in battles. He has run out of juice in his suit. It's showing that the battery power is pretty much gone. He's got all kinds of decorations on the front of that torso. I'll show you more of that as well. Black fish piece. I think that's the first time we've gotten that piece in black. It's got fire coming out of it. I, I guess that's supposed to be a flamethrower. So those are not air tanks on the back. Those are fuel tanks for the flamethrower itself. And wow, the eyebrows. Yeah. You know this guy is really, really evil. Anytime you see eyebrows that thick, it's bad news. And uh, he, he is wearing a tie though, so he has class, but uh, he's still gotten pretty burnt up, which I'm assuming is his own fault or, or a mishap that involves his own equipment. Coco Misako, the new younger Misako. This was one of the most uh, most striking changes that they made to the Ninjago universe to bring it over to the, the movie side of the franchise. A uh, good looking figure though. I like the, the subtle or small fine flower embroidery on her jacket, which in, you know, continues down to the, the hip piece where it's printed. Those, are, those parts are lined up pretty well. The buttons continue to, to line up, go straight through from the torso to the, the hip piece as well. And the hair piece looks nice. It's got the, the hashi going through there, the Japanese chopsticks. And this is not a new piece for the purse or handbag there, but I believe it's a new color with the dark red. Not much else to see in terms of her, her face there. Not much of that was blocked and once again, no alternate face. Gong and Guitar Rocker is another figure that I think will be used outside of the context of the Ninjago movie by many fans. It's another pretty well produced figure with good detailing on the guitar or bass there, whichever you want it to be. And he's got a nice tat on this side, well done with the, the shaping of the, the dragon there. Has some fine details in it has a, a wristband on, on that arm, no printing on this arm. The legs are dual molded. There's more to be seen in the printing there. Take some of this off. The headband goes all the way around. That's not dual molded. That's just a, a, a paint application on the outside, but a pretty cool tank top as well. Good printing on the hips. And he has an alternate face, which is unusual in this series. That's good to see. I like it. Here's another version of Garmadon with a different face. This is Volcano Garmadon, who comes with what I believe is an unprecedented four printed arms. <laughs> Look at that. Two on this side are the same, two on this side are the same. Of course, those are different pieces. Four printed arm pieces. And he comes with the new mold of bowl which is printed all the way around. That's in sand green as the base color, and that's just a beautiful piece. Really nice looking. It's a little bit off in the printing, kind of like the uh, Star Wars astromechs tend to be with their, their heads. It wasn't lined up perfectly, but it still looks really good. And in real life, you know, oftentimes those things aren't lined up perfectly either with the, the glaze. So I'm perfectly fine with it. It comes with a single silver spoon as well, and a pretty good looking figure. Nothing Nothing really hidden here, nothing additional to be seen. But yeah, a lot of a lot of good stuff here, or a lot of at least expensive, high-end stuff here. Now there's just a little bit more of the forehead print. Like Father, Like Son, this version of Lloyd, also included in this series, also comes with a silver spoon and a bowl. But this one, this bowl is molded in white and has the dragon print on it. It's another really good looking one. And that's such a realistic color scheme as well. I mean, I had a, or my family had uh, a set of bowls kind of like that. We got from, uh, I believe it was from Japantown. Yeah, I think it was from Japantown. 
San Francisco when I was a kid. Just kind of takes me back a little bit, but another nicely produced piece. Fairly simple uh, level of detail on the hoodie on the front, the printing for it. I think it gets just a little bit better when you get down into the hips and the legs, you know, just finer, smaller things. Brand new uh, mold for the hood there, which also includes just a little bit of his hair coming forward towards the front. This is a nice hood piece because it stays nice and close around the head. You know, it doesn't make it look comically large. Has a little bit of, you know, creasing and detailing around the back. It's shaped up really nicely. A little bit of print on the arm right there as well. That's on both arms, obviously. And taking that off just so that you can see the rest of the shape of the eyebrows. It's just, uh, just another, another version of a face for him. This is flashback Garmadon showing that <laughs> the kid got his hair from the, his father's side. Well, at least the hair color. Hey, this guy had a little bit different style. It's funny that they brought the tie piece through both torsos there. It's too bad that the printing on the upper torso is a little bit cut off top and bottom. You know, wish there was a little bit more vertical range there so you could kind of connect that through. But this guy has what I believe is a record for dual molded arms on one single figure. And he has just a photograph there that he has taken, comes with the camera, it's just kind of the standard old piece. And this is just a, a reuse of the upper torso. And I'll take his hair off, no alternate face for this one either, but I do want to see the rest of the detailing of his face when he was happy. Zane looks really happy here as well. Looks like he's getting ready to do some, some lodging. He's got his ugly sweater on there, a little bit of reference to one of the previous space themes from Lego. Interesting hair scheme on the head, you know, printed all the way around. I guess it's supposed to be a little bit of a, a digital cut. Maybe he did it himself, or maybe he did it with help of a, a computer or a robot that he programmed to do that for him. But a nice backpack piece there. Gray is the base color, and they also brought in the dual molding to get the red into it as well for the pad. And there's no alternate face, obviously. Also no print on the back of this torso. Here's the GPL Tech. Well, she's a fan of Batman, and she has a coffee mug and a laptop that is folded up. That's a piece that Lego has had for quite some time. It's also a existing hair piece, so nothing new there, but she gets the dual molded legs, so that's kind of fancy and nice to see. Interesting print. I'm not sure exactly what that print is supposed to be on the hip there, if that's supposed to be her her belt going around, you know, it has some of that medium nougat color in it. It's interesting that they actually brought that color in the legs and the lower part of the hips all the way down to continue a line around the, the base of the white part of the, the lab coat there. And for folks who haven't seen this laptop previously, like I said, it's an old part, but it's still somewhat relevant today. This is new Nia in her Spinjitsu training garb, and the entire outfit is the same one that is evidently going to be used for all of these characters, which is fine. I'm perfectly fine with that. I mean, it's supposed to be a uniform. They did not need to go with any female-specific curves on it. This is just perfectly fine. I think this is well done. I like the, the bright silver band to hold her, her ponytail together and up. There's the, the Wu Crew print on the back of that as well. She's got dual training swords. They're reddish brown in color to represent uh, just wood construction for those. And I yeah, I think the hairpiece is really good and the face is fine. The Shark Army Octopus Warrior here is a bulky figure front to back, side to side, you know, not very tall, but it's just a lot of layering that goes on here. Once again, for the sea creature, they did that with a softer uh, kind of rubbery type of material. It does use the exact same mold as others for, you know, new mold, but same shared mold for the air tank there. And also just a little bit of kind of armor going over the top with the pauldrons and such. It's got the stud shooter, which comes with a couple of extra studs to fire off. Has a fish as well, just for, you know, bludgeoning folks. 
And there's a look at his face and the rest of the torso print. Note that all of these prints are different from the ones on the Angler. Here's an off-duty, kind of civilian, normal version of Cole with his hair down and messy. Uh, I think that the face looks a lot different than this training version. Almost doesn't look like the same character. Of course, the eyebrows are kind of distinctive features, so it helps to do that. But a, di a very different thickness with the, the line for the, the mouth on this one. Uh, pretty good printing for the torso, for the tank top there. Again, they got some, some crease lines in it. They also did a good job, I think, with the hips. Subtle printing for the legs there as well with black and also the, just the slight dark blue lines going around. And this is his boom box here with the gold printing on it, an existing mold. And yeah, just pretty good looking overall. World Tour, sold out, 1985. That's actually a pretty good looking piece, pretty good looking print from the back. And there's just a clearer look at that full head just by itself. Oh, and the symbols there actually say AC, DC. The last one I have left is Sensei Wu himself. There we go, with the nicely printed cloth piece for the lower half, and he comes with a big old box of cornflakes. That is a, a printed part there. Also takes me back to my childhood. Used to eat a lot of Kellogg's cornflakes back in the day. Printing on the side of the arm here as well. The, the cloth piece doesn't really fold around all that well. I guess you can kind of mess with that a little bit to get it to close up a little bit better. There's printing on the back of that one. No alternate face for this, obviously. And a reused piece for the headgear that we've gotten before. And there's a full look at his face and the rest of the printing for the torso. Lots of age lines, a little bit of depth with the two different colors for the facial hair. And that's it for this series. 20 figures, a lot of new parts, new prints, and also new molds for this entire series. A lot of good stuff, a lot of variety as well. Overall, I think this is a very well done series and I look forward to seeing how well these figures fit in to the rest of, of the sets and you know just kind of swapping things out and creating different parts of the movie along the way in addition to creating new imaginative scenes. If you caught anything that doesn't seem right in the video be sure to check the comments to see if that's been previously answered and addressed. Otherwise let me know in the comments what you think about this series on the whole and if you have a favorite figure or favorite few figures out of all of these. I've got a lot more videos to produce and bring to you, so I'm going to keep at it, and I'll talk to you again soon.